Um, then do you want do you want me to leave this voice chat and I'll call you? Uh, we can just stay here. It's fine. Okay. Oh, there we go. I actually found the button to watch stream. Perfect. It's working. Incredible. On credit. Okay. So, Blue Coin, Blue yeah. Deck, it's alumni to lead off here, and we're up against this exciting syndicate list. Uh, so there's a bit of control. We already in hand see double bloody good fun. One of them gonna be sent back to the deck. Notably, the key bronzes that the this syndicate needs to establish early on are these Fallen Knights and the Disciples. They have a bit of nice synergy together, getting really efficient spenders, which are gonna boost up these Fallen Knights. And you need them in graveyard for your uh, Hemel fart later on. Early defender coming off of this arcane term into Tudor. Uh, how does this intimidate list get through the defender? Note it is. Devotion, we have this horse in Junior, and it's not even running Poisons or more else. So it is a proper Devotion deck, lacking a Toll Punish, lacking a way through Defender. How low we have fallen. Yeah, it would take a while, there's... It looks like it'd be, you know, potentially some combination of... Like, pings from Senior... I, it does, yeah, it doesn't matter because it doesn't look like Taki is planning to try and get through it, but rather to compete on points here by setting up the engines. Uh, but no access to Letitia for P features obviously makes makes this round one a little bit less scary. Yeah, is that is that fair to say? I think that's definitely fair, and. Uh... Look, if you can set up enough coins to maybe BGF this front row student, uh, have a line to maybe contest this round, deny zeal on the alumni, make, look, make a bleed happen, make it awkward. I think there's a not a bad roll here. It's going to be a two point per turn engine, and you do see the leader charges being used to set up this bloody good fun. Really shiny. Going to see the protection. So, this front row student is at three power. This arrow to the student at four patience. Patience, not power. <laughs> gonna get it does look like, yeah, it's going to get through. Uh, the, the zeal is going to get through. Let me not use dangling participles. Yeah, it's. That's always what we care about when we're looking at alumni, it's are they going to get the zeal? Once you get the zeal, then you're in a much better position. It allows you to be a lot more liberal with the use of your alumni, you don't need to be so careful with your leader charges. Well, though, I'm not sure if it's going to be able to get much done in terms of setting up kills. Just playing a higher tempo crime off of this Furko, though. And maybe also because you have several other crimes in hand, it's more the intimidate portion. And also with that, um, with the the boost, if you make the back row continuing to grow, then with one one click on Brawler, then that the shield comes off. So at least then you can get one for one value of your coins going forward. But like you said, it's this is mostly going to be about spawning units, I think. Yeah. And look, if we do see see you. Oh, Count Reuven's treasure the next turn. It is a double intimidate proc when you have three intimidate cards on board That's six points right then and there Spot on we are gonna see a senior I think here first Early to, Like you said put even more intimidate value on the board we always love them to the dead. But uh, sadly the cut up lackey is going to be cut up themselves Carved up by the Bernard students and uh, reset with the casting contest. A little bit of a student check. Front row is at five patients, back row at six patients. Good things come to those who wait. He features doing a very good job at waiting and keeping calm. Which it, it's hard to keep calm when you're looking down the barrel of losing on even. Uh, 
still ahead though passively with this Aratusa Adept. Getting two points with this patience. Okay, and so manages to, um, Peefeech manages to get, without the Letitia, get a ton of value here. The rune word coming through and being able to provide a 15-point unit in the end. Uh, zeal for the alumni, and we will, assumedly, with that chapter of wizards on board, we will assumedly see a push. Uh to play the horse and senior and then instantly pass just after getting casting contest that feels strange to me um yeah it feels like a feels like a not great use of resources you see the Letitia coming down now uh the shiny was used i believe necromancy is still available which the Letitia could uh, get a bit of synergy with that you could always just use the tissue with this arrow as a student in hand to get her to maybe something a little bit decent. Uh, nah, you're not going to click the zeal on this sausage maker because you'd expect it to get uh, hit in the face of the fireball. And we are, we are definitely, I, I don't, I don't know if I would say it's, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if we're going to see a, a, a quote like, all, all in push from Peefeech here, mostly just getting the value of having had the chapter of wizards still on board. But um, it looks like um, it looks like Taki's hand is going to be good enough to be able to stave <laughs> off, certainly stave off a 2-0 and, and potentially be able to keep the card here, depending on what how far um, Peefeech wants to push. You. Yeah, I think it should be able to protect. You'll have the Gerhardt and Necromancy to draw for uh, Peefeech, notably still a Banner's student in deck. So the practice makes perfects haven't been properly set up yet. You might need to commit, say, the Decree to thin out this student to have those practice makes perfects available for round three. And I'm sure you're even fine giving up a card if you're Peefeech, if you can get out as much control as well as you can, because like you said, then those... A, a short round three where you're able to play oh, alumni for huge value feels good. These goods. And now maybe you go get the other front row student to get it out of your deck, and because the Letitia's on board. You've yeah, your so we see that happen. You haven't taken Letitia yet. She's at five patience. I'm off gonna get a second fall of night. Don't pick this sword a toy. I could go fishing for a bit of damage with a Mount Ruben's treasure here. And I don't think the uh, Damnation has a super nice setup yet. We find ourselves in agreement. Could see Coerced Blacksmith to maybe get another 8 power unit, uh, maybe buffing up this Horson Jr. And then with the Damnation, we can turn it into a second Hamel Fart. Agreed. If you don't think that the Junior is going to be getting you value in this round anyway, then like you said, it's easier to get there. Uh, to be able to get to, like you said, something like 8, which will give you so much value with the double Fallen Knights on board. Should click. It's going to be an Airmancy 4. That just makes perfect. Is guaranteed now. Sets up the damage again and decides to kill off the coerced blacksmith. So denying a potential setup on that animation. But now we get the final bronze in the graveyard brought back for Tikiki Rally. Gonna be Count Riven's treasure for the double intimidate prop. And so uh, for in generation, I guess that's basically it. The Swindle isn't even that good um, due to a lack of crown splitters, so you're just going to poison yes, you. Have you made your this. Hi. <laughs> Doesn't do awfully much, but it does get ahead here. Um, you would expect P Feach to pass after clicking for a tissue, I'd assume. So, 
I'm just gonna be a heat wave until fall of night. Yeah, it makes sense, I think, to opt for, because we, we know that there isn't the other poison in hand, but if you're Peefeech opting to, to play in there, I think to purify also makes sense. There is one Fistech remaining uh, for Taki, so. uh, but we expect Taki to be able to get out of here fairly easily. I don't know, though, if you do it with the Damnation, so maybe you have to give up. I need to math it, but potentially with eight coins. With eight coins, I don't know if you, even if you get there without having to give up the cleaver. Uh, it's... Is there a five that? I think cleaver. Oh, I have to give up the cleaver. Cleaver should be enough. Yeah, cleaver. Cleaver will be. I think is more than enough. Yeah. But, um, but I was just imagining that you'd want to save the cleaver if you could. Yeah, that is true. You do at but, least get uh, card advantage. The problem is, you don't have much left. It's going to be hard to yeah. start this damnation. Um, what's and what's left for Taki? Is it is it Jacques? Uh, there's no Jacques, so you have Thunder and oh, Candle are the, the only golds here, and then a smattering of bronze crimes. It's not looking hot. And then alumni, well, you have Gerhardt, Necromancy, and just an alumni from hand. It's... Uh, it's looking rough. So the Camp Ruven's treasure is gonna give a little bit of extra coinage, with all this over-profiting from the last round. Issue is... There's just not much nice to spend from it. You have... Uh, To even have here. You're not getting enough units for the Temple Guard. You can take the failed experiment just for six points. Uh... There are enough coins that you can't float the Gerhardt because of the uh, because of the removal, right? Yes, you have to play around the bloody good fun. We have each other's backs. That's more than most. And this. This to avoid the casting contest gets removed by payday. Yep. If you Gerhardt and shield it, however, then you can play the Gerhardt for a casting contest after deploying the alumni. Uh, I guess this is fine too, right? Yeah. You, you know, I mean, Taki doesn't have a unit for damnation yeah. anyway, right? There's literally no unit at all. There's no way to generate points on their side of the board, so that's it. And Peep Beach, uh, with a uh, with a little bit of taunt uh, there at the end, or maybe just some some kudos one way or the other, takes game one uh, we'll go with, with the ladder. alumni from Blue Coin. All right, and in game two, we now have uh, Taki on Blue Coin. With this uprising list, this is the one that I incorrectly had referenced before, but now will correctly reference has the ponies in it, uh, plays Meave, and is essentially like a priestess carryover hybrid deck that I think has a lot of a lot of neat uh, tools in it. And then of course, Peefeech taking the very control heavy precision strike list. We see a lot of that control in hand. Um, and uh, playing Curse Scroll from Blue Coin, Taki is not going to be able to crush on the protection from uh, Stratagem to be able to protect some of these engines. So, I'd instinctively think this is a pretty decent matchup for the Uprising. It's a, by and large, a point slam list. Uh, that it's it's going to be a bit of a struggle for P Features Control deck to keep up with the pure point slam. Now, what Peefeech is probably going to be banking on is that with the existence of the Toll Punishers, um, Takiki Ali isn't going to be able to float both Priestesses off of the Vernon Roach. They'd have to kind of play one Priestess and have the Colon played in the same turn, use another Priestess to set it up beforehand. Um, they can try to maybe use their damage pings and stuff to just misalign things for the Colon. I stirred to ooh, immediately. Why? Up here. Why the? 
Interesting. I was kind of surprised about not taking the... Not opting to take the uh, the bowman uh, because then the two the two damage just makes it makes it easier to remove Beware. on the following turn Beware if you weren't planning to use leader to remove it. Um, but we do see some purify value there, so that's always good. I think it might have just been setting it up at circle of life. Would it? True, circle of life would have been an efficient would have would be an efficient way to do it, and we mm. see that happen anyway. I don't know if it would have made much of a difference, but since there's no specials in the deck, it's impossible to boost the Istrid by just drawing cards. That's true. And uh, it was worth noting, Tiki Kirali is skilled enough to draw both Unicorn Kyronex, and uh, does have this Siege Master in true. hand as well. Ooh, some interesting choices for Bountiful Harvest. Gonna take an Elven Scribe. Uh, especially not easy access to three specials in hand for Peefeech. Would have to play the Philavandral. Or in theory, Mahakam Pass and click to get this Elven Scribe through. Agreed. Or, and or some, some combination of interesting events like... Um... Bountiful Harvest getting a Sork, which is not not particularly likely. But to your to your point, the thing is just that the Scribe doesn't. We know that the Scribe does not have an efficient way in hand for Peefeech to have uh, gotten the boost. But Taki opts to um, to jam on Sace in round one. Probably makes sense. There's not a whole lot of engine style things to remove, so that's a fairly. If you think the opponent might get the boost on it, it's fairly efficient there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, as you say, there's not much you're worried about removing in this deck. You may as well just use the Ansys as is, and the rest of this hand is kind of awkward. You committing Unicorn Karnex would be quite, quite a huge commitment. Uh, what do you play here? I think you get. I think you get away with playing the Witcher here. It fixes your hand, and also being being up 14, then it probably being up 18 is probably enough to get out if that's what you opt to do. Like you said, other than doing something like uh, jamming jamming me. Okay, so you play Meave now, and then potentially play the Witcher behind it. Also threatens enough tempo that you could also you could be cheeky, uh, and maybe maybe try and tempo pass if you're talky, force out both the leader and something good. It was already looking like a pretty good tempo pass. I think this is just pushing it even more. It's certainly outvaluing just this file. And uh, look, I think with this deck, you really do want to save the mentor for later on. Because you're not oh, playing Pins and Maneuver as a leader. Yeah. You have less ways to shuffle um, the priestesses back into the deck. You would like to save it, but. True. And let's Maybe see, you're up 16. Worth, you're up 14 before the Meave goes off. And then the Meave is a plus 7. And we do see, so we see Taki end up taking it essentially as a tempo pass. Up 20 points after the Vitality resolves. And so Roos now has to make some choices. How much is Philavandral Frogs? Yeah, I think you get there with Philavandral Leader, but I don't think you get there with Philavandral. Before Brooks is four, twelve six, and seventeen. Will be... Is it enough by one? I think it probably would be. I assume P features on that. Also note that the frog is important here because it gives the elven scribe the other extra, the extra point on the vitality, which wouldn't have gone through otherwise. You're right, so with the one leader, good math there by, uh, hands down by Peefeech, to know one leader charge is enough to get the job done, that's excellent. thing is, how are we going to push? In previous games I've seen with this uh, Renfrey Cohen list, it was often the Unestrang you used to defend the round 2 bleed, potentially played off to the opponent pass. Here, yeah, well, you can play the Unicorn Chironex. Um, and, uh, I think P features in a rough spot, because really your best point slam play is that Zoltan in uh, this control square list. Without access to the Zoltan, I do not see how you'll be able to stay ahead and really force a lot out. But 
even if you don't force much out, you might be able to play into it when the hand is awkward, without the Summer Strangle, without the Renfree's gain in hand. It's not ideal for uh, to keep your rally here. Agreed. I think you're you're always keeping. I think you're always keeping your card, but like you said, it's the trade-off here will be interesting. Uh, you and we see full leader here by Taki to de deter this any further any further uh, push from Roos. Uh, Roos would need to play the Mahakam Pass first to be able to then clean yeah, out the volunteers. Okay, we have so spawn base copy. Damage all enemies by one. Destroy an enemy unit with eight or less power. Um, Let's do These are less not to, to kill the... great choices. Oh, but I think you probably... Do you take the eight or less to, uh, to kill um, Zoltan? Is that maybe, maybe the best bet here? Because there's going to be armor, the so the damage all by one. I mean, damage all is kind of nice against the thinners. You have cooldown a four and a pass or six damage. It's going to be yeah, four and a pass. I think is pretty good. Um, that allows you to save. Okay, we see a giant slayer. We see quite a few giant slayers. Yep, all fire. And the Giant Slayer should get the carryover value here. If, yeah, if we play into this round long Bring enough, yourself. it will for sure. Only better. Hey, able to find their Enfreeze Gang, able to find the Priestess. It might actually be the kind of situation where Takiki Raleigh would want to save their Enfreeze Gang because it's particularly nice with the well, Cohen. But the other problem is that the Shiru, which we see is at 7, could be used to deny that quite easily. Yeah, so like you said, the question is, do you thin out the gang here? Or do you just, do you try and, do you, do you, do you think that you're going to be able to get through without the tempo, without needing the tempo of the gang and instead play the Witcher in it? Yeah. There's one more point on the Giant Slayer. Interesting, and so you opt to play the Snowdrop Ooh, here. It draws both Priestesses, which is excellent. <laughs> that is some skill right there. And that's, I think that's gotta be it. That's it for p Feach, and so keeping the card, there'll be four points of carry over in the leader uh, for Taki, plus the damage all by one. Peefeach does still have full leader and the Mahakam Pass carryover as well as a Giant Slayer on board, so this... I th I think with the ability to last say, to avoid the Shiru as a last say play, I think... I mean, yeah, that's you're able to get your hand kind of perfectly situated here. You're going to be able to, to play the... If you're Taki, you're going to be able to play the Renfri's Gang. The last two cards in your deck, which will be pulled out by Vernon Roche, is going to be both of your priestesses as a last save play. I think that's awesome. Probably pretty happy with that. Those games at seven were potentially scary for the Shiru. Although it would have been actually not good because the precision strike leader would have forced uh, the Dried Sensible to damage one of the things and offset it anyways. We do see the Anastranger coming down, getting heat waved. I don't know if you'll be able to get a death blow here for P-Feach. You'll probably have to combine it with the Wolfsbane. And I don't know how you get the Shiru through. You might just not play the Shiru and a near man see the Zoltan. And just take the Zoltan instead. That was not the tallest unit there, right? Why not take the knot? Yeah, what am I, I missing? Guess Why not take the, the Shiru? Knot there? So then uh, you are taking Shiru? I guess the 14 of the Shiru, I guess that's the math, is that the... Mm. The 7... The Shiru plays for 14, doesn't the Zoltan play for more than 14? Plus the extra 3 points that you get from Wolf spanning a 9 instead of a 6? I don't even understand how you would shoot here, because the 
just playing a Traveling Priestess here would, like, offset it. I think... Also, I think in this deck, the Shiru, like, almost always just boosts by two, I guess. Uh, there's some uncertainty as to how much the Shiru is boosted. Like, if it was at five, then the Mac and Pass sets it to ten. If it's at seven, then it's fine as is, but... So it ends up to, yeah, the Zoltan was worth a lot more, but maybe it was more of a threat. Yeah, maybe. It's still a healthy amount of points here. I think, I think Taki gets there, but it's because of the Cohen in particular, but... And what do you get to here? You can do... Okay, and, and Peefeach throws in the towel. I'm curious to know what would have been the correct number for Cohen. It is. We are going to get to see Hecker Swarm with uh, Yen of Vengerberg, not to be confused with Yenvo or Yen Khan. Right. Um, so, against pulling the strings, there's a fairly limited control in this uh, Insectoids list. You have Natural Selections, Parasite, and Curse. Okay. At least though, for the pulling the strings, you're not going to give them great targets, because uh, it's just a whole lot of low power, or essentially wide point slam in this list. Right. Maybe maybe the best target if you're P-Feach for pulling the strings, if you can uh, get the damage through, might be something like trying to steal Siri. Is maybe like a best case scenario because, like you said, there's not there's not really particularly a lot of engines. I, I don't know how you damage the Siri though. Maybe if she's boosted, you could use BGF to pop the shield and then oh, the do something with the horse. No, I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, that, I'm just I'm I, I, that's the only thing that comes to yeah. mind looking at the list that's worth stealing. Otherwise, it's just for points. Yeah, I'm trying to like think through all the possibilities, but uh, it's eluding me. Uh, but you probably expect the natural selection to be used like we see here. You should make it quite important as a unit with two game tags on it. So being able to get rid of that is quite nice. See Jackal not coming from the leader, but instead from a Eventide plumber. Probably fitting with the lore there. Just more more points going wide without going too tall, as Raka Swarm is off to do. We see a cute little bird coming down on the board, being able to boost by three already. It's the blind eye tag. That is, as you said, three games. And it, it's boosted to ten, so it's a 50-50 if Takiki Raleigh wanted to take the curse here as to what it would find. But uh, you could just use say a clone and get out the roach, staying ahead. And I think this is why the Nova Grad was played early on. Eiffich was expecting quite a hard push to come through here. So trying to maximize the points from that as well as have the flexibility to, if need be, you can click it and get the carry over. Here's a sausage maker. Here's a parasite. And uh Sausage Maker gonna need a trip to the Eye Doctor after that one. I like it. I like where I like where your head's at. So we do see, like you said, a simple pulling the strings played more for the coins than for the value of what you take. It's not terrible. There's Still the Siri. Eight, I guess. Pulling the strings in terms of the raw value doesn't feel great there, but does get you enough coins to push fairly far. We could see the COC here and do. And uh, Peefeach not not happy with uh, 
Not happy with how that goes, losing uneven, but does have Siggy in hand, both leaders and the Nova, the Novagrad carryover into the Siri Nova for Taki. So the point is, is that it's probably not like some sort of 2-0 situation, but certainly a you you might expect a bleed coming here. I, I enjoyed then, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little gratifying, to be honest. Uh, and then maybe you see Taki just try to push to a short round three with uh, with Golden Necker. Beautiful play there with the Wild Hunt because of the Siri already on board. 16 points of tempo for having played a four provision. Plus your round one setup is a nice thing to have. Maybe a BGF here? BGF is particularly nice in this sort of matchup because when all these drones come onto the board, you can BGF to give them all bleeding and you force um, Tikiki Rally to do some kind of wide boost to protect the drones from death. Yeah, so Taki making a choice now about continuing to bleed or taking the extra card. Ops to continue the bleed. And exactly what the lemon says. Two, four, that's six, so that's a tie, so still not there. It's not like you could have really spent more with that unless you wanted to commit the yeah, leader. Because of the veil. But, but I guess the slight drawback to doing this is that the Chimera is going to deny a bit of that bleeding value. Decent boost. I think we see the charges. So with having both the having the Siggy and the Jacques in hand, unlike in the previous series, P Feach opts to spend the bank, uh, and and it doesn't feel like it's going to hurt your feelings the way that it did. Uh, in the previous series, where using the bank in round two led to not finding either of those top end golds going into round three. And now we do see that P Feach does finally get ahead here. And we'll see if Taki can suss out that one more card would be a really nice trade in yeah. this bleed. Even committing birth cards could be quite scary here. I did or... see you hover on the talisman, because to your point, you know, are you where, when, or when and how, in a short, increasingly shorter round, are you going to be able to get value out of your uh, wide boost, also the Yen Con? Mm -hmm. So you wonder if uh, maybe Wispus into uh, Wispus into a talisman is what? seven is a, is a nine point play overall minus the five bleed but the point is just to trade cards here yeah i think it's playing more for the value as you said not really yeah. looking to get ahead or maybe you'll get ahead if it's just a bronze coming out from p feet you would force a bit of a leader commit um. but yeah no matter which you play these are probably the two cards you'd save compared to anything else in the deck. So it's going to give quite a bit of information over if you play this. And this late in the game, you don't really need two leader charges. Like, one is usually enough going into round three, otherwise it only plays for like four more points. Well, it doesn't even go for the tribute, just plays the collusion. Yeah, so P Feach, roll, because of having the Jacques in hand to be able to get out, rolls the dice here, that one of two things, either, yeah, either that that last card from Taki is Kekker, or if you, it's essentially like a double bluff, right? If Taki thinks that that means that uh, P Feach is weak, jams the Kekker, and then the Jacques gets you out. And now you've traded Jacques for Kekker, and there's not a whole lot of great stuff left for opponent, but we will see... Jacques plus some cards for Peefeach into Taki having Golden Necker. And based on those draws... Yeah, based on those draws, uh, Peefeach says, I'm, I am I do not think that I have what it takes to, com to compete uh, in round three. 
swapped over to the um, 20 client screen, but didn't miss too much there. It's nice for Tigrali, you have the Fallen Knight as well as double uh, Eternal Fire Disciple. Mercenary Contracts can get you the second Fallen Knight if you so choose here as well. Oh god, to begin with, a lot of carryover. Not many points right here and now. There's a bit of a problem when you have these Fallen Knights coming down. That's number one, that's number two. Yeah, and you wonder, like, you can spend a leader charge plus an offering, of course, to kill the five right now, but y you wonder how much you want to save that, especially from red coin, like, if, if it's, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a tough decision point for Peefeech to decide when, when to use that kind of combo, because your leader charges are so valuable in this matchup to be able to win the dungeon. Uses a leader charge in the offering to turn off one fallen knight and still down. Now eight here. That's a good point. It's just really nice to keep these turn off fire disciples out of range. Um, they didn't. Uh, I guess the kill there doesn't hurt. Again, there's not much to remove in this deck. Feels a bit of overkill in the skirmisher, but why not? I prefer it. Your dancer is used mainly to set up an offering, but uh, one offering doesn't matter when there's another disciple, anyways. So a lot of points coming down from Teeth Riley, and quite a bit of removal already used up uh, for Peefeech, not to that great effect. That's what that's where, where I was going with the like conceptually. It, it's it's just challenging because you've used now both offerings and a leader charge to be down 20 points. And an offering is a really efficient way to also remove uh, Hamelfart, in addition to obviously the Fallen Knights, which are a huge problem. I expect the Hamelfart to get answered by Zoltan Leader. Uh, yeah, another good way to do that, the three and then the one damage, yeah. Thing is, that's a huge commitment all in one turn. So you'd want it to be in a turn where you're in, con sorry, in a round in which you're in control. Uh, like if Takiki Rali gets an early win here, leads the bleed with Hemelfart, you commit the Zoltan leader in return. I don't see what you're gonna have going into round three for Peefeech at that case. I call that one the tickler too, my friend. I never understood the, the concept of the coerced blacksmith because that blacksmith looks really happy to be making weapons for the crime for the crime gangs. Doesn't seem anything coerced about it. Seems very chill. I think a proper coerced blacksmith would give up and start a dumpling shop instead. Thank you. So yeah, so we see some thinning done here by uh, by T. Raleigh, we see uh, not having to commit too much to be able to win the round from Blue Coin, and now a decision about pushing versus, uh, and particularly pushing into the Mahakam Pass on board versus just deciding to take a long round. What do you, which do you think, if you were in uh, Taki's spot, which would you opt for? Curious. I'm not sure. You might want to just go long round because you do have significantly more engines. Passing means you burn this Mahakam Pass order. But bleeding would mean a chance to threaten, um, like say if, if you bleed here, okay, I'm bleeding. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, the Hemelfar requires expensive answers to counter it. And Finding the Blue Mountain Elite to finish off this tunnel drill. Quite a lucky pull. And you do see Takiki Riley playing correctly there, playing tunnel drill front row. Um, front the row. P uh, Feech um, wouldn't have been able to hire with a Doppler Banner Bowman there, but nonetheless, tunnel drill has been disassembled. And you, 
you're not gonna pass here, I think, with Sukikigurali. If you would have, you would have just gone straight into that long round. You'd have to commit Hemelfire if you're gonna play into this. I, I don't see any other ways about it. The eternal fire lights yes, you. And you were spot on. And then exactly like you said, we expect to see Zoltan here, which allows cleaning up both the Hamelfart and the engine. That feels like, I think, a fairly... Wait, what? Opts to do that to keep the to keep the uh, the leader, okay? Yeah. I can so it doesn't need to with that. full commit the leader, because the Hemelfart dead means Maybe you can't bring back the Fallen Knight and the Disciple, and just having one Fallen Knight on board. Actually, in this deck, it's at this point just a glorified assimilate engine, frankly. Right, um, especially because the now the junior, you know, we we obviously can see the hand. Uh, P features playing to a hand very similar to this, but no no way to spend here. Yeah, it was exactly what you'd called out before: is that the Hamel fart becomes utilitarian, but with no with no spender on board, it doesn't make sense then to play the treasure. Uh, Horson, because of the the uh, the click on Mahakam Pass, means that you're not cleaning up the Zoltan with the Junior. Did I say assimilate engine? You did, but I, I you, I, th I think you were gonna, you meant intimidate, but it's <laughs> yeah, the same I thing. Clearly it's only did. Yeah, but it was gonna be the same concept, Ooh. which was one point to turn. P Feach opts to take the last Mulligan, draws the one in six to draw. Actually, in, I mean, in in the end, and Mulligans drew both leaders. Uh, sorry, both leader, uh, summon targets. But yikes, that doesn't feel great. So Candle is important here to set up a damnation for a second Hemelfart. And with the Zoltan already out, the second Hemelfart is going to be a whole lot harder to deal with. That's a lot of golds missing though for Tikiki Rally here. They're able to get one of them with bank, but only one of them. Yeah, missed a lot of golds here. Yes. And, uh... Her activity is not necessarily easy either. You want to set up a unit to then Bruce with this candle to set up an 8 power. But I don't think it's possible with a oh, one click will do it. Well, Blacksmith. Blacksmith is. Uh, is is it profit 2? Yeah, it is. So then you'd be at, and then you'd be at 9. But it makes sense to do this first because then if the cleaver lives, then the cleaver is on board. Uh, which you're gonna need to boost the cleaver here to protect it, and does. So if the cleaver lives, then if you play the hammer fart on the following turn by killing the cleaver's muscle with the damnation, oh, no. you get your value on the spawn, right? Oh, um, okay. She would be nine. With she was the, at uh, five, yes. Pilot. <laughs> Uh, I suppose you could. You just play damage the it. Yeah, and you damage it by one, right? Like, do you give up your leader, but with one of them in hand anyways, do you care that your leader doesn't get a death blow? I don't think so. I mean, it's, it is minus six points because the. Uh, uh, to not summon uh, the leader, but how much more true. value is it to kill the cleaver? Okay. Oh, you could call. Could you call? Does that change things here? I don't think so. What's it at six? Does six okay, matter? It's just... Okay. It's just a chariot. So Geeky Riley will get to do damnation things here. Yeah, so we should see damnation on the cleaver's muscle to spawn a hamel fart and then maybe a couple of coins to be able to summon. Might be, be able to summon a uh, fallen knight. Might be sure to answer the hammer fault then. Let's just go for a purpose blacksmith. So I think this is fine. You're essentially just greeting the intimidate value on the cleaver here. Right, and, and also with those extra coins, it means that 
you can, with the damnation, that you can play, you can do more things when you use it for the Hamel fart turn. Yeah. Uh, it also just occurs to me that there isn't a dwarf on the board right now. And is there going to be for the, because the, or is the volunteer break? Uh, depends on what you near, man. So if it's a sheer wolf spain, then you're correct, and we do just see the dwarf being played. Well, there is a dwarf on the board. Have played, but it's the each could have played the, the chariot back row to spawn the two dwarves and didn't. And as yeah. a result, the Mahakam volunteer didn't summon... I think was worried about playing to the horse and junior, but uh, maybe that still would have just been better because it would have been had to be a lot of coins spent, oh, or maybe not a lot of coins. You just would have had to, and or would have emptied the bank to be fair. To kill off those doors. And now you assume that it's a one liter. You play one liter charge here hmm. to spawn um, a cleaver's muscle, which boosts the. No? Okay. Because the Shiru, we know the Shiru's at five. And so five, that's nine, three, six. Yeah, so you're short to be able to, you'll get two targets here, but you won't be able to get Hamel Fart um, with a combination of Shiru plus leader. So that's probably not the motive right now. Backup plan, not finding any damage. There is an artifact on board. So the Saboteur can spawn a Deadeye. But it's it's just it's not what you want here for Peefeach. Not glory. And uh, this is the downside of running Precision Strike as a leader with Shiru rather than Gorilla Tactics. You're a lot more limited in how you're able to boost your Shiru on the setup. And I, I don't know what you can do here. And we're fast gonna get the disciple. No, you can't get a fallen knight because it was heat waved, it got banished out of this game. This congregation is going to get so much value. Give what we demand. Oh wait, I'll sorry. Oh no, Heat Wave hasn't been that used. Was... I'm confusing this with the previous game. The, no, you're good. I think it was the pre the previous series. <laughs> oh wow. Even more intimidate value. That was nice great Do you think the situation adjusts? Trying to play around the Shiru here. Oh. That's so many points. Well, and that... even the co even the congregation is gonna play for. She is. Shiru at nine is pretty perfectly enabled now, but doesn't take it. Okay. We just yeah, keep... don't don't you don't you take the Shiro at nine there because there's so many other spenders on board. Like that cleaver is not doing anything that any of the other spenders aren't doing. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's some other way to set it up at five or something. Yeah, the congregation there played for an extra four points on. Each night. The Fallen Knight. So yeah, that Fallen Knight at 9, dying at 9 would have... Two things would have happened. The Fallen Knight dying at 9 means it doesn't go to 13. And also, because of the placement of the Oxenfurt Guard, if you would have killed um, Hamelfart, then it doesn't get to boost, efficiently boost off of the Oxenfurt Guard. There's no unit there if you play, if uh, Taki played Congregate on that turn. Yeah. And also, Hamelfart dead means the Fallen Knight couldn't be brought back too. And kill sort of two of the most important units. Yeah, and Vile's still not clicked, still looking for that Shiru setup. I don't see how it's going to happen here. Yeah, it's not. There's no nines, no eights. Uh, there's no five. There's one five setup on the other side, and, and it looks like that's that. And the Filivandra would have been at 9 anyways. Like, I guess... I, oh, was the Filivandra at 9 the whole time? I guess that was why. 
I wasn't really paying attention. But if you're, to yeah, that, but, but to your point, if 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 you were going to do that, you could have you could have still if if those series of events were going to happen, you still could have yeah. done that on the turn when the um, fallen knight and the hamel fart were both at nine anyway.